Am I the jerk for how I behaved on my final day of work experience? I, a 17-year-old male, live in the United Kingdom, and it is required for people my age to do a work placement or internship. This week, other students from different schools also did their work experience. One of them was dismissed for bad conduct. Another girl barely showed up. Two other girls got on with the work with me, but they were only there for four days. Today, I was the only student working. I anticipated more work because as the week went on, the work I was given increased in volume due to the situations of the other students. I was also given work that would normally be done by actual staff, as they called in sick. I was asked to complete it within a specific time frame, and when I checked with a colleague she said that placement students should not be given the work I had been assigned. She also mentioned that the time frames I had been given are ones they struggle to meet. Despite this I did not let it discourage me and managed to complete the work by the skin of my teeth. I went on my break at 1.00 pm. I got an hour, so it ended at 2.00 pm. At 2.30 pm I went to the toilet. Earlier that week I had a stomach bug, and while I felt mostly okay, the pain had not completely gone away. I took 5 minutes, and when I came back the manager called me into his office, accusing me of slacking and taking an extra half hour break because he had looked everywhere for me since 2.00 pm and could not find me. He said that if he looked at the camera it would prove his point, so I insisted he did. When it showed I was only gone for 5 minutes and had been working, he still persisted in accusing me. A colleague then heard him and stood up for me because, apparently, during the time he claimed to be looking for me, he was actually seen by multiple staff members having a conversation with a family friend who happened to be in the store. He then tried to accuse me of resting, as I was kneeling down when he found me, but I was actually putting something on a low shelf. I then started to lose my patience. I said clearly, the cameras have proved my point, and legally, I am allowed to use the toilet just like any other staff member at any time during the day. You on the other hand, might want to reconsider all these discussions you are having with friends you invite to the store, because as my colleague is pointing out, you seem to do that often, even when I am not here. Now, are you going to look for other excuses to penalize me, or are you going to let me get on with the work I allegedly wasn't doing? He then let me go. Later on, he kept trying to accuse me of slacking every time he saw me showing a customer where the product they needed was. The customer corrected him and he left me alone. When my shift was ending he gave me a short time frame for a task and sent the only security guard we have on the floor every few minutes to berate me and tell me how I could not leave until it was all done. I did what I could before my shift ended and left anyway. Am I the asshole? You did nothing improper. By all accounts you worked hard and accomplished the task. It seems to me your boss wasn't pleased that you accomplished a task he deemed impossible and chose to find excuses to belittle you. Managers like him are a dime a dozen and will go nowhere in life. Keep working hard and maintain that respect for yourself. Am I the jerk for giving my friend a harsh reality check? I am an 18-year-old female and have a friend who is also an 18-year-old female. We met a while back through my ex, who we both no longer speak to. We became friends quite quickly and got along really well. She has always been boy crazy, jumping from guy to guy, and never without a relationship, but I never judged her for it. Recently, it has gone out of control. She has a lovely mother who does everything she can for her, but she will not allow any of her boyfriends in the house. This has caused her to leave home and have insane arguments with her mother on multiple occasions. Instead of respecting her mother's wishes, she chooses to go live with whatever man she is dating at the time. These men are not good people. Most of them are low lifes, criminals, and drug addicts. Every new man she dates makes her worse. Recently, she even tried a pretty extreme substance that her boyfriend, whom she knew for three days, was addicted to before moving on to the next one. This has made us more distant. We used to hang out weekly, and now it has been reduced to just sending each other snaps. This is where the aim I the asshole starts. I knew Dabbler. She started dating a new man about two weeks ago. This man is not a good person, but she moved out and tried to start living with him. Once she starts dating someone, she will not leave their side until she finds someone new to date. They were not allowed at each other's houses, so they decided to become homeless together instead. I said to her that this is not a good idea and that she should stay at home and go see him whenever. She does not have to be with him 24-7. Of course she would not listen. I told her they should get jobs and rent a room together, but she would not listen. This infuriates me as I have had a job since the age of 13 because I had to. She has never had a job and never intends to. She begged me instead to let them live with me and my family, which is not happening. We do not have enough room, and I do not trust this man or her anymore. Their solution to this is to have a baby and live on welfare. When she told me this, I gave her the biggest reality check. I told her that welfare is not that easy to get on and that it will not cover the costs of raising a child. I told her she is lazy, needs to get a job and stop chasing after scummy men. I also mentioned that any child she has will have a horrible life, as I know she cannot raise a kid properly. The last time we talked was a week after this argument when she texted me asking for money. I refused to give it to her because it would not be spent on anything good, and I would definitely not get it paid back despite her promises. 
I am pretty sure she is really mad at me because every time she talks to me, she is making horrible decisions and I blow up about it to her. Am I the asshole? Should I just let her be and trust she will be fine or should I not do anything about it? I guess it is not my problem to fix. Your actions don't make you a jerk. She's a lost cause and you can't change her mind. Trying to get her to make better choices will just be miserable for both of you. If she has a kid and you know this stuff is still going on, call CPS. Am I the jerk for not allowing two of my players to pursue romance in our campaign, but allowing another player? So I, a 28-year-old male, dungeon master Dungeons & Dragons games for both my friends, and also for a small Dungeons & Dragons club. I run role-playing and story-heavy campaigns. Now I do not mind my players romancing non-playable characters, but I do expect more than just I roll to seduce Blanche Bot Dallas. My current campaign started three months ago with four players. We lost one of our players and gained three new ones. The newer players have been in the campaign for three weeks, so we currently have six players. We run weekly sessions and sometimes fit in extra ones if we can. The main hub for this campaign is a tavern. This is where my players receive a lot of clues from patrons and quests. Even if we spend multiple sessions away from the tavern, we always come back. When the campaign first started, the players needed to get some information from the orc barkeep. The wizard, the ranger, and the fighter all failed their attempts to intimidate the orc. So my friend, who I will call Kai, decided to take a different approach and flirt with the orc. His shifter catboy rogue got a natural 20, has a plus 4 charisma, and successfully got the information as well as a free meal. And this kept happening for some reason. Every player except Kai would fail social interaction roles with the orc. So we decided to make it part of the campaign that the orc had a crush on Kai's character, which after about 7 sessions turned into an actual relationship. Now fast forward to the new players joining. The issue is with Josh and Amanda. Josh tries to seduce every female non-playable character we come across and gets upset when he fails. When he succeeds, he tries to say it means that he and the non-playable character are now in a relationship, and then gets upset when I say he needs to put a bit more work in than that. Amanda also keeps trying to romance a non-playable character, but unlike Josh, she has one in mind that she keeps trying, the orc barkeep. At first, when I told her she could not do that, she went on a rant about how it was unfair since Kai had romanced the orc. She said that we cannot expect the orc to remain faithful if there are better options, her words, not mine. She was still upset when I relented and said she could roll for flirtatious interactions, but had to roll with disadvantage because the orc already had feelings for Kai's character. This has caused arguments and is making the campaign not fun. They both say it is unfair and that I am railroading the game and playing favorites because I let Kai romance a non-playable character but not them. I think there is a difference, but maybe I am biased because Kai is my friend. So, am I the asshole? You are not at fault here. Players who insist that they roll well and are therefore entitled to seduce any character are a real problem. It's crucial to set expectations early and make sure players understand that rolling well doesn't guarantee the outcome they want. If they're not willing to take the game seriously and respect others' experiences, it's best to kick them out. Am I the jerk for not being able to call my partner when I was busy caring for my aunt? So my girlfriend was supposed to come and visit me today, but she did not get on the flight that I paid for because I did not call her. A little backstory, my aunt just had half of her foot amputated, and I have pretty much been her caretaker for the last few weeks. I am not that great with too much on my plate, I try to live a simple life, and that works for me. Since caring for my aunt, I have not been as communicative as I would like to be. I live my life in the moment, and can get lost on other responsibilities. We have been in contact throughout, but not like we were when I was just worrying about myself. So she was supposed to take the plane today, the 19th. I was going to drive down to Los Angeles, California, and be there by 7 a.m. in the morning, leaving by around 4.35 a.m. She has been calling me and I have not been able to pick up, and we were playing phone tag. I have the screenshot to prove it because she claims I never called her. To prove that I wanted her to come over, she said she wanted me to call her. This was Monday and Tuesday. I called four times Tuesday and six times Wednesday, but to no avail. Thursday night, I had not seen a buddy of mine in years, and with everything going on, I decided to go over there and let off some steam. She ends up calling me and my phone literally has 1% battery left. I tell my friends to hold on because it is my girlfriend, and I have to take this. I answer the phone saying, Hey baby, I am so sorry, my phone is on 1%, it is about to die. She hangs up. I call her off my friend's phone several times. I leave her several messages. Her reasoning for not responding was because I was drinking with some friends. All the while she was accusing me of sleeping with some other woman, asking, Are you with someone right now? And threatening to end the relationship. She ends up not getting on the plane and pays me back for the ticket. Am I the asshole for being caught up in my other responsibilities and not remembering to call my girlfriend? If you have any questions on the matter before grilling either side, let me know and I will answer them. Thank you all in advance, and sorry it was so long. It sounds like a frustrating situation for both sides, juggling taking care of an aunt after surgery and maintaining a long-distance relationship can't be easy. 
The fact that there were multiple attempts to get in touch but missed connections due to phone issues and timing is tough. Her reaction might be influenced by the stress of the distance and possibly other underlying issues like PMDD, but it's understandable she'd be upset. Ultimately, not being able to communicate effectively seems to be the biggest hurdle here, and both need to work on better timing and understanding each other's situations. Am I the jerk for telling my sibling that our parent is not to be involved? I am currently pregnant, and the father and I are not together but plan on co-parenting. We get along great and have feelings for each other, but he is not ready for a stable romantic relationship after his past ones. Honestly, a relationship is not my top priority. Our child is. I only met his mother recently after finding out about the pregnancy. He had never really talked much about her or any of his family. I have known him, I will refer to him as Garth, for three or four years now. After finding out about the pregnancy, he opened up a bit more about his mother and their relationship. Over the last year she would only reach out to him when she wanted his help with something. For six years before that, she did not talk to him at all and did not even know if he was alive. Now fast forward to finding out about my pregnancy. He had told his mother, I will refer to her as Reba, about how he is going to be a father, and only told her my first name. That same week, I got a random friend request on Facebook and a message. It was Reba reaching out to me, wanting to get to know me. I talked a bit with her for a while and things seemed fine. She only had good things to say about Garth and our situation, and everything seemed fine. But it started getting weird when she showed up at my job to meet me in person instead of trying to set up a time. She then managed to find my cell phone number somehow and started texting me that way. Things really escalated when she found my mother on Facebook and started messaging her. It started the same with my mother, wanting to meet up and get to know each other, nice small talk. But then my mother sent a single invite to an event, and Reba started questioning the paternity of my child when Garth himself had not questioned the paternity. When confronted about it by me, Reba tried telling me that Garth had told her that I had said it was possible that he was not the father, which I know never happened. She then told Garth that my mother had been harassing her to go to this event, which I also know never happened since I read the messages myself and also showed Garth. The last straw was when she made comments about my child's paternity at the gender reveal. She then managed to find my best friend on Facebook and tried to ask her how to get me to open up to her more, not even an hour after the reveal. I ended up calling Garth and explaining that it was out of hand. I thought it was best if he talked to her and handled her, seeing as she is his mother. I also told him that as it stands, I do not want her at the baby shower, I do not want her visiting us in the hospital, and I do not want her having our address. We are trying to get a place together before the baby arrive. He said he understands, and that is okay. It has been a few weeks now, and I am just starting to think maybe I overreacted. So am I the asshole. You haven't done anything wrong. She doesn't respect boundaries and has insulted your morality by suggesting you lied about paternity. Questioning paternity at a party is bonkers, and lying about interactions is a huge red flag. This needs to be nipped in the bud or it could become a bigger problem. Am I the jerk for leaving after my sister-in-law called me clingy? I, a 24-year-old female, had been visiting my aunt's place for a wedding. She lives a few hours away from me. She has two boys, aged 30 and 27, and both of them are married to beautiful and intelligent women. I met them only recently and I have not hung out with them a lot. I always wanted older brothers since I only have an older sister. Although I acknowledge that this was not their responsibility. My aunt loves me a lot though. I asked her if I could stay at their place for a couple of days more. At night, both of my cousins were with their wives, and I was helping my aunt with the dinner. She asked me to call all of them downstairs. When I went to the room I heard my older sister-in-law say, Oh, when is Yemi name leaving? I don't know why she is so clingy. She annoyed us throughout the wedding and meddles in our family so much. My cousins just lightly laughed along. I'm unsure if they found humor in her words, or if it was awkward laughter. My cousin saw me in the doorway and it looked like he had seen a ghost. I just said, please come downstairs, dinner's ready. He stopped me and asked me if I heard her. I just gave him a smile and said while holding tears back, I did, but it's okay because she can have her opinion. It's okay if she doesn't like me. I did not take into consideration that you guys are on a hectic schedule and forced myself here. I'll do better. He apologized to me on her behalf, and she apologized as well, saying she was just stressed about the busy schedule and packing, although I had been doing chores for them all day to not be dead weight. After the dinner they tried to talk to me, but I avoided them and called a friend. I talked to him, just trying to calm myself down because my feelings were really hurt, and I felt unwanted. In the morning, I packed my bags early and told my aunt I was going to visit a friend in the city, then I had a flight late in the evening to go back home as soon as possible for work. My aunt was surprised and asked me to wait until my cousins wake up before I go, but I told her I had said my goodbyes last night already. After seeing my friend I just went to the airport a few hours early and sat in the lounge until it was time to go. My sister and I have shared GPS locations for safety purposes, and I forgot that she could see me being at the airport a couple of days earlier than planned. I told her everything. When I got off the flight I had missed calls and texts from my aunt and my cousins. Apparently my sister told my mom what went down and she was very unhappy. She then called my aunt and asked her about this and found out that she was unaware of it all. 
My cousins had played it cool. Long story short, my aunt and my uncle are super upset with my sister-in-law. My sister-in-law feels like I made an immature and rash decision and made her look bad in front of the entire family. She thinks I could have given them a chance the next day to fix things but I threw them all under the bus. Am I the asshole? In my opinion you have done nothing wrong here. Your cousin and his wife are the real problem. She wanted you gone and you left, which is exactly what she asked for. Staying would have been too awkward, and there was nothing that could have fixed or cleared up the situation. It's best to stay civil and gracious with them in the future, but leaving when you did was the right choice. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.